Hey everyone, welcome to the USU podcast. I'm Julie and I got to tell you, I, I'm trying to contain myself. I'm beyond excited about today's guest. She is not only a dear friend, she is a wise woman. You are going to just be so amazed with what you're about to hear and learn from the amazing Lisa Barnett. So let me tell you a little bit about Lisa before you get to know her. Lisa Barnett is the international best-selling author of From Questioning to Knowing, 73 Prayers to Transform Your Life, and The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records. She's also the founder of the Akashic Knowing School of Wisdom, where she has taught thousands of students worldwide to access personal soul wisdom and guidance to transform their life, working directly with their Akashic Record Keepers. With more than 20 years of experience in spiritual healing, Lisa teaches these simple tools which empower individuals to find greater fulfillment, happiness, abundance, and health. Lisa helps you to align with your soul path, understand your soul contracts, and complete your karma and vows. The best place to find Lisa is at akashicknowing.com. This is a gift. Lisa, I cannot tell you how grateful and excited I am to dive into all things Akashic Records. Welcome. Thank you. And I am so excited to share all about the Akashic Records with you and the listeners and to do some energy healing and clearing for people if they want. And really, this is, oh, this is profound work and it is time for people to embrace it because it is really part of our gifts that that we have as souls to to have this wisdom so yay let's share it let's do it <laughs> all right my beautiful dear soul friend i you know we met at a at a um business mastermind meeting and I was, it's love at first sight, everyone. I met Lisa and I was like, oh, who is this amazing, bright, filled, light worker soul? I just, my, uh, yeah, I just connected with you immediately. And what I'm thinking is, because I know I have a range of people that listen in and some, actually I got some requests to talk about the Akashic Records and I'm, I'm thinking there's some that have no idea what it is. And there's probably a range in between. Can we start with like talking about what they are um, how you started accessing them. I know you have an amazing story about that. And just let's get like, start with the basics. So for people tuning in that are like, I've heard of it. I have no idea. Can you find them somewhere? Is it a library? Like, what is it? Yes. So kind of the simple answer is that each person has a very um, personal, private Akashic record. And that is the recording of your soul's journey throughout time. That means that everything you have ever done or been in a lifetime here on earth or in other places, planes, and dimensions, everything you are is recorded in your soul's library. And we call it the Akashic Record. Now, um, I think a library is a good way to look at it because you can imagine you've got this beautiful little stone library with a couple of rooms. And, you know, I always see mine has kind of, um, it's two stories high and has a balcony <laughs> all nice. around, you know, that's nice. the way I picture mine with a fireplace and a big armchair, yes, right? Of course. <laughs> and the other really cool thing though, is that you have librarians. You have your very personal record keepers. They are beings of light who have never incarnated on earth. They are not human. They are not angelic. They are their own very specific kinds of beings of light. They are record keepers. Mm -hmm. And that's all they have done up to this point. And so they're here to support you. And really all of this energy is within the information arm of source. So it is, you know, completely in the vibration, the love um, of source of the divine. So there is no judgment, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there is pure support and unconditional love when you work in the records. Mm. Okay. 
And I'm even thinking like, there might be some people that are like, what do you mean different dimensions? What do you mean not human? <laughs> I'm thinking like, I could hear these beings saying like, uh, what are you talking about? Um, so for those that are kind of new to that idea, can you say a little bit more about that too? Right. I, I, I can try and say a little bit more without going too galactic because okay. I, would, <laughs> I would say I tend to be a little more on the galactic um, side. But so if you imagine that um, when we're, when we individuate from source, we actually journey around and we may live in etheric realms. We may live in other sorts of planets or worlds that are maybe not human. Um, there are angelic realms that some of us live in and act as um, angels to humans. We're never, uh, we're never archangels. We're never the higher vibrational angels, but there is a whole group of angels that is really here to help the 7 billion people on earth. And each person has three angels. That means there's 21 billion angels running around out there right now, taking care of all of us. And so some of us, when, um, when we choose, we can choose these things to be of service to humanity and be in the angelic realm and help the humans. So there are definitely people on earth. You may have met them. I would call our Julie one of them. Aww. Truly an earth angel. And people who really are here to support humanity. They're now in human form and often live um, in the angelic realms. So there's other dimensions. There's other places. The angelic realm is, of course, one that is easy to name. Um, but we're, we're very infinite souls, and we yeah. do so, so much. And the earth plane is only one of the realms that we hang out in. And when we come here, the interesting thing is, is that we do come here to learn and to grow as a soul. Yeah. And this is one of the um, unusual dimensions where we really have free will and that ability to, mm. to learn and to grow. And um, we also have what we call karma. And karma is never a punishment. It is about learning and growing as a soul. But that learning might show up in a not super positive way. Yeah. So often we have a challenge in our lives and that may be because our soul chose to come and learn something and overcome this challenge so that they can go on and be a clearer, stronger, wiser soul and often to help other people with those challenges. So, yeah, um, let me just, <laughs> sorry, I, 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 keep going. I just kind of, awesome. it just kind of flows through, awesome. but I did, um, I was doing some work actually on another podcast with, with a gal who works with um, people who have been betrayed. So she wanted me to come and talk about betrayal yeah. with her people. And, um, you know, of course you would say, who would choose to be betrayed? right? Whatever it is, if it's in a marriage or a business, what, who wants betrayal? But the truth is, is that we learn and we grow in so many different ways through this experience. And this woman in particular had been betrayed mm -hmm. and had taken that opportunity to learn and to grow and to deepen into being a therapist and to help other people who have betrayal issues. So that is about healing karma, growing as a soul. So the bad is not bad because it wants to hurt you. It is because our soul has chosen um, a way to learn something new. Oh, I love, I love how you shared that. I, um, I'm just thinking I can relate to that with dealings with food addiction and self-love and when I did not feel self-love. And it's like now today I can be of service in that way around worthiness and self-love because I had times where I felt none of that and I would abuse myself with thoughts, with words, with food. With So I love that idea, you know, that, that karma is not a punishment. Like this idea that we're here, it's a classroom. We're learning. It's for our yeah. soul to learn. It's beautiful. Yeah. <sighs> so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, I think it would be interesting as you told the story to me um, when you were a little girl, like I'd love to, to zone in on you a little bit, Lisa, and 
kind of your coming to and realizing this is this is your your purpose, your your soul's journey. Um, can you share a little bit about what it was like growing up and having some of those realizations and how you're doing this today? It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. So my story is a little crazy and I know there's other people because I like to share it because people always say, oh my gosh, I had something like that happen to me. So I remember um, being little. I was about three years old and I remember trying to tell my mother something and as a three-year-old, you know, my language wasn't all that well you know, formed. And obviously I wasn't getting my message across <laughs> to my mom. <laughs> and I remember really looking down and looking at my hands and realizing that I was trapped in a body. Wow. And that was the thought I had at three was something like, <gasps> Like I'm trapped, I'm trapped, I'm trapped. And I said to my mother, I want to go back. And I could remember um, three etheric souls. It was like my last memory before I came into to a body. I must have been with two other souls. There was three of us. And the feeling is, is that when we're not embodied, we don't use our mouths <laughs> to talk like we do here. Yeah. It, it's, it's a lot more of like passing on an energy ball that has the story and the feelings and the pictures and the whole nine yards in it. So if I gave you this ball, Julie, you would just receive it, bring it into your awareness, and you would be there with me as a three-year-old. Yeah. You would see, feel, know, experience everything I'm trying to share with all these words. So my realization at three was something like oh my god I'm I'm trapped in this place again oh my gosh <laughs> and I can't even talk yet <laughs> wow. wow so uh, so wow. frustration has been a bit of my um yeah thing <laughs> for my yeah. whole life yeah but it's also been my driving force so when I was really old enough to read I mean you know really read like I was going into high school, I was 14, I think, 13, 14, um, I started to read everything spiritual I could get my hands on. So I was very blessed to be living in California. It was 1969, if I dare date myself. Um, and I read uh, Baba Ram Das's first book, Be Here Now. Oh, yeah. And the Beatles were working with the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Transcendental Meditation was coming to the West. Um, one of my favorite books was called Journeys Out of the Body. I'm like, I was always trying to get out of my body. I'm like, Journeys Out of the Body? Yeah, teach me. How yeah, to show me that. that. <laughs> wow. And, and Robert Monroe um, was a master at that. And the Monroe Institute, if people are interested in looking into the Monroe Institute, they still teach you. It's really about um, astral travel. And they really teach you how to do that. So that's what I was doing, you know, when I was about 13, 14, 15 years old. <laughs> and then, you know, I went on to... Um, to minor in philosophy and it, it seemed like a clear-cut path for me but um but it wasn't because i actually don't believe our lives are meant to be that um that clear so for me um my my pain my karma my my um really emotional drama was my two very best friends both died one at 13 and one at 19. And these were like my soul sisters. And, oh and I knew that I had come to um, create things with them. And um, mm. when Marsha died at 13 of a, a brain tumor, I felt, um, even though I was only 13, I felt that I was supposed to be able to save her. I was supposed to be able to heal her because that is part of my soul purpose. And I knew my soul purpose was to heal. Um, and I didn't know how yet. So I felt so um, mm. inadequate, right? Mm. So much pain around not being able to save her. And then um, when Shuby died in a, in a freak car accident, which anyway, wasn't really even a car accident, but um, 
I felt totally and utterly deserted by God. So I was really pissed off. And, yeah. <laughs> and I decided that I would try being human, human, whatever that meant. I decided that what human, what, you know, what do humans do right here? I'm 19 years old and I've already lived, you know, all of my 19 years in this other kind of place and dimension and studying spirituality and mm. philosophy. And I'm like, you know, let's see, it's the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's probably enough said <laughs> right that's so cool well some of us were born in that time but I, I remember a little bit yes. right but um it was a wild time yeah sex drugs and rock and roll let me just say I was yeah. in advertising I worked in advertising I decided I was going to enjoy life and I did I said I'm going to make money I'm going to travel I'm going to have fun and I did for about 15 years um, until I came to that place. And again, these are the things that many people may relate to. Yeah. They're the wake-up calls. My wake-up call was chronic fatigue. It's an illness that, that knocks you out. You know, your, your, um, your wake-up call was more around, right, uh, food addiction or self-esteem or... And Hashimoto's, which is similar. Yeah, oh, on, on Hashimoto, me. sure. Yeah. Yeah, autoimmune. And so many of us have that sort of experience because the truth is, is we've come to help to heal the planet right here and right now. And these challenges are really to wake us up and remind us of who the who we really, really are as ancient wise souls, not just little human beings. And so um, I was really kind of blessed by that. And um, I was going to an acupuncturist who said, I can help you heal your body, but I can't fix your soul. You've got to figure out what's going on there. <laughs> and <laughs> again, luckily, I'm living in California now, right. you know, 70s, 80s, you know. Right. So at least I was a smart enough soul to pick a good place. <laughs> yeah, perfect alignment with where you were, because that would not fly perhaps in like Iowa. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Nothing gets Iowa, but not the same as <laughs> California. <laughs> yeah. Right. And um, and so I actually went to uh to a psychic, and she said, "You're a healer." And I'm like, "No, I'm in advertising." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, oh, I'm a healer." It was like for 15 years I forgot who I was. I went asleep. I had amnesia. I totally forgot really the truth of who I had spent my first 20 years being even. Mm. So, um, you know, I did a right, you know, right turn and, um, I was blessed to, to be able to quit my job. I had a bunch of babies and I just went back and started studying, um, you know, to deepen it back into my intuition and and healing tools and modalities and and then what happened for me which is kind of the the more um, unusual thing is I'd get every once in a while when I'd be doing the healing I I'd get this huge booming voice I get all this information really throughout time it felt like I went from you know being a decent and intuitive to standing in like the void and seeing this whole plan, the past lives, the soul contracts, you know, what the, the karma this person had, what they had come to do. And I'd always be like, wow, oh <laughs> that God. is amazing. Wow. So, um, so that was, you know, kind of life changing, but I didn't know for almost five years who I was talking to. Yeah. Because at that point, remember, you know, 25 or so years ago, uh, people didn't talk about the Akashic Records. People didn't know about the Akashic Records. And even though I did, yeah. and my teacher who said, always go up to the Akashic Records and ask for, you know, healing for your client. But mm. she said, you're not allowed to go into the Akashic Records. And so that's what I was taught. That's yeah. what I believed. And that was actually true true for about 1,000 years. Wow. The Akashic records were pulled away from the planet because mm -hmm. humanity misused the records. They, in the dark ages, people started using it for their own gain. Mm -hmm. And so back around 1,000 AD, they pulled the, they, the Akashic record beings of light, pulled the vibration high enough away from the earth that it 
regular people couldn't access it anymore. Mm -hmm. If you were a mystic or, you know, a channel or, a, you know, deeply entrenched in the wisdoms of the um, world, then yes, maybe you could. But anyway, so it took me a couple of years to figure out who was telling, talking to me. <laughs> wow. And, and then I realized I was chatting with the Akashic Record Keepers and they said, please help us bring this information back to humanity. Help us, you know, by starting a school, by teaching this work to the world. And, and that was kind of their mandate many, many years ago. And I said, sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, cause what do you, it's almost like, what, what are you, you going to say? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. You got the wrong person. No, thank you. Too bad. I, I, I tried. I tried. I had really at that point, I had like three babies. And so, you know, the rest of my crazy story is, is that um, uh, I had, uh, we had our son and he was about 11 months old um, when I got pregnant with twins. So I had three babies um, in a year and a half. So when the twins were born, he was about one and a half years old. And then um, my nephew moved in with us, who was 13. So I went from one to four kind of overnight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right? So here's another crazy part of the story. If you look at, so now, of course, I'm pissed off, right? Because I'm going, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? What is the story? Right. And they said, well, you had four soul contracts with these four souls, and they had to figure out how to get in because you weren't having four babies. You weren't having four births. So they had to figure out how to get in, and they did. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, so you had these young babies, you're starting to hear, if you said it took you five years to really understand who you were talking, who was speaking to you. Um, and Lisa, do you feel that, I don't know if this has been told to you, do you feel you were a light, um, uh, a worker, a uh, record keeper before incarnating as a human? Um, because I know that typically that's not a crossover, right? These the record keepers are not human; they're in a totally different realm. Very, I would imagine, a very high vibration realm. Um, but do you feel that you started from there? I'm curious because I know yeah. we. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, these are sort of the things that I learned and had to kind of do and process as I went, you know, through this this process of creating a a school or. Yeah when them asking me. So first I, um, I was told that you couldn't go into the Akashic records and right. then I realized you could, and that these beings had been, you know, yelling at me for five years <laughs> and seriously, they yell. I mean, not anybody else's, but mine. <laughs> they yell at you to listen, to wake up. Right. Yeah. They were yeah. trying to get my attention and I was just not getting it very quickly. I mean, come on, five years, really? That's silly. Yeah. In hindsight. Sorry. <laughs> right. But I said, why me? Here, I'm a housewife. I'm a, I live in the suburbs. Um, <laughs> why me? Why would you pick someone like me? And they said, because you were one of us. Because you were wow. an Akashic record keeper before you went on your journey. So this is the way they explain this to, to me, to us, right? So if you imagine that... Um, <laughs> I kind of love this story because the record keepers are very funny, right? So they're pure source energy, pure unconditional love. They're just funny and 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 can be very silly. So I mean, it can be really fun to talk to them because you know, because they're pretty cool. Yeah. So anyway, so the story about individuating from source and going on a journey goes something like this. So they said, imagine if you were in Manhattan, right? So now you're in New York City and um, uh, imagine source is a big high rise building. OK, so just bear with me on this one. <laughs> it kind of works out in a crazy way. And so all these souls decide they're going to individuate. They want to take a journey. They want to see what it feels like to be individuated souls. So there's about 25 of them get in an elevator, crowd in an elevator, they go down, they get out of the elevator, they go out onto the street. Here's this little group. This is now your soul group. You're born in a little basket. You know, you came down in that elevator together. Now these are your best buds for a very, very long time, really throughout time. So you go out on the street and you gather together and you go, what are we going to do? Look at there's buses. Oh, there's bicycles. There's taxis. What are we going to do? 
So my little soul group said, well, let's take a walk. Let's see if we can figure it out, right? And there's other elevators dumping out onto the street, right? And they're jumping on buses and going off and having journeys. So we are walking down the street and here's this big building and it's not tall. It's only about four stories high, but it's a whole square city block, Mm. huge New York City library. We're like, oh, let's go in the library and let's study up and let's see maybe where we should go. Let's, you know, let's be smart about this. Right. I came from the studious group, apparently. So so we did that and then we liked it and we stayed and we studied and we became librarians and we started to be of service to other souls who are on a journey and we kept their records. And really because there is no time. You could say we were there for thousands or millions of years. It doesn't matter. It's just a long time. And then eventually we said, hey, we figured this out. Let's, you know, go grab a bus. Let's hop off to the airport and, you know, go on our galactic journey. And we did. (laughs) Wow. So often we go other places before we come to earth. So anyway, so that was a very long time ago, but they were like, you know, you get it. You were one of us. And occasionally I find other one of my students. I also have in my school, I certify consultants to, to read the records for other people through my school. And I teach people to teach my work. So I have certified teachers. And um, it's not that unusual to find that the people who are called to teach this work have also been record keepers. So, so cool. Hey, I'm talking to you, listener, you you USU listener, if you're listening and you're like, this is expanding my mind, good. And if it's a little bit out there, it's okay. Like, thanks for hanging with us. And for those that want more, we're going to keep going in. I just want to say this is like unbelievably interesting to me. And I know people listening in. Um, All right, Lisa, I have like a million questions. I'm going to try to, I'm trying to keep myself like focused here. Um, So can anyone access the records? And Maybe you can give us an example of what it's like when you get into the records. So let's, let's actually do it this way. What would it be like when you're in the records, maybe giving us an example? Can anyone access it? And if so, how? Okay. <laughs> and then I have like 20 more. So I'm going to just moderate. Right. Let's see how that comes through. Yeah. Um, so yes, anyone can access the records. The record keepers say, this is your birthright. It is time for each and every person to reclaim their birthright. You have a soul plan. You wrote a plan. Yep. And it is time for you to read it and to know it and to really, you know, access that. Okay. So, um, yes, I would say anyone who is called can do it. Now that doesn't mean we're not human and it doesn't mean that we don't have doubts and stuff and our own garbage. Right. But it is your birthright. It is here for you. You have a plan. It's helpful to read it. We'll talk more about that. But what I do want to say is, um, because the Akashic records are this pure, high light vibration of source. They are unconditional love. So when you move into the vibration of your Akashic records, there is no judgment. Mm -hmm. It just feels expansive and joyful. And it can be very blissful. So, um, it's a great place to live. And this is one of the things the record keepers also would love for us to be able to do. And this is, you know, what I teach is yeah. to be able to open your records and keep your eyes open so we are not going into a trance or anything like that yeah. so that we can actually have conversations in our head with our record keepers. We can get divine guidance. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> Do you want to just pause it for a second? Can we split it? Sure, down? of course. Yeah. Here we go. 
So it is your birthright to be able to access this wisdom, this light, this really unconditional love. What I would say is that so often when people open their records for the first time, it brings tears to their eyes and those tears of joy, the tears of love. And some people say things like, you know, um, you know, before I did this, I was afraid what I would find. Yeah. Like a lot of us have a fear that maybe um, we're having a challenging life because we're a bad person. Yeah. But that is never, ever the truth. And your record keepers will tell you that. They tell you how amazing and divine and beautiful you are. They tell you about lifetimes where you did so many great deeds and where you were really here holding a space, healing people, teaching, sharing, being of service, being a guide in some way or another, right? So, so many profound lives. And then some we have, you know, we get trapped in these karmic loops. But because I find um, that it's so beautiful, the energy is so really just of love, yeah. that it can be amazingly healing just to share that energy, to learn to open your records and go into them and, and even meditate in your records. And, mm. and I love to teach people um, what the record keepers have given me is a five-step wisdom prayer system. Mm. So they're actually sacred prayers that open the doors, the energy of the Akashic records, and move you into the Akashic field. Mm -hmm. So the good news is you don't have to meditate for 20 years to do this. <laughs> you actually don't, news. you know, right? Yeah. You that don't have news. to meditate. I would say you really don't have to meditate at all. I have um, brought through about a dozen or so guided meditations, but they're really 10, 15 minute visualizations that are energy tools and healing tools and clearing, you know, um, meditation. So it's not about having to sit for hours, hoping you stumble into this space. It's about really consciously doing this five-step um, prayer system. So it's easy and accessible for people. So great. Well, I want to share, you know, I um, had the pleasure of getting your book, Lisa, and I was on a really long flight from Hawaii. I taught over there, I was back, and I, um, I don't love turbulence. And I was like, well, this is a good time. I'm going to start the book. I actually, I consumed your book, you know, it's a 10 hour flight and I'm a slow reader, but it gave me enough time. And it was so incredible because you literally outline how to do it. Um, and I did take some notes while I was in it. And it was like a different kind of sounding voice came through. I mean, it definitely had that feeling of love. And so I love that you teach how to do this. I mean, I, I, to me, I love what you said. Like we're all at this point in humanity, we're allowed to. We're, it sounds like it's our birthright to do that, that it's, it's made available now. Yes. 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 And this is, you know, one of the things when they asked me to start a school and to do this, and they really said, we want you to help us bring this back to humanity because this sort of tool, not only is this information part of source energy, that means this tool is moving you yeah. into this beautiful, high, unconditional love and wisdom of the divine. This is life-changing it yeah. transforms your life and yeah. it helps us to move out of judgment to make new choices to understand the pain or the drama that we've experienced so we can kind of you know understand it and move forward get over it and and drop some of these old stories so when you understand it it's easier to let it go right so beautifully said so i one quick question before we're everyone listening in. You you guys are in for such a treat. You have no idea because we talked about this ahead of time. We're gonna give you a taste of this, and um, I'm like sitting off the edge of my chair because I'm so excited to do this. I'm just curious for those listening that you had talked about many lives, living different lives, or souls going through different um, lifetimes. Is there like a on average you've lived 400 lives or four lives or how do, like how do 
sometimes I get the feeling, you know, and I don't know if this is just, I, I, was, I wasn't raised in the 60s, but I can feel my old soul peeps, right? But I don't know. It's just, you know, and I, I have been working on my own intuition. That's a whole other story. But maybe talk for just a second, the old soul, new soul lives. What is that about? So what the record keepers say is that it takes most of us about 600 or 800 lifetimes to work through the karmic patterns that we get ourselves stuck in. Wow. Now, it's easier and will become much faster. So the, the souls that are coming to earth now who are newer to earth souls, that doesn't mean they're new souls, but they're newer to earth, will move through a lot of that really quickly, maybe in... 50 or 100 lifetimes because they won't be stuck in the old story. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine back in the dark ages and the middle ages, you know, it just was a lot of trauma. Life has been hard on this planet for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So mm -hmm. lots of old stories, lots of old pain. Um, when we get into the the karma and the guilt and the blame and we get stuck there, it might take a couple of lives. It might take us, you know, like I was talking about the betrayal, it might take you five or 10 lifetimes to work that out, to stop going, I'm betrayed. Now I'm going to betray you and you betray me and I betray you. And, you know, we just get stuck in this crazy pattern until mm -hmm. we go, oh, I'm going to forgive you for that. And then let's, you know, create a better life together. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. It takes a while to come to that place, right? And some of the listeners might be, what? Forgive and go on, you know. I mean, it's, it's we're human. That yes. takes us some time. So, yeah. Um, so what I would say in general is, is that the people who are really waking up, and there's a huge wave of people who are waking up to the fact that there's a lot more to life than just a job and a house and a nice car and a whatever, family. Yep. There are higher realms and, and, and um, information, and, and we are ancient wise souls. So, mm. um, you know, I don't bump into too many new souls. I bump into some new ones who are new to this planet. Um, because I would say, you know, to me in, in the way I see it is that often that souls who are younger are, are still more trapped in the first stage of evolution, which is more about, you know, kind of blame and guilt and, and, and really st and stuck in that place they haven't moved to awakening and empowerment and yeah. um, making new choices yet so definitely it's important that you're in a in a space of understanding and feeling that you have some choice in your life that you can make a new choice that you can change things consciously and change and transform your your life and and if you're in that place you're an old soul yeah that when I would imagine most tuning in today, no matter where you are in the spectrum of being like, what are we talking about? To like, this is my new favorite topic um, or something in between that you've probably done some lives and you're here to, I know for me, I, I, I feel called to, um, to be of service in the biggest way possible. And I, I sometimes don't know what that is. I just ask and then I try to listen from that place of divine you know, love. That's really it. Um, but I would imagine all of us, anyone tuning in has you know, has that inkling of, I want more, I want to be more, I want to serve more. How do I do that? And so I'm, I'm guessing old Soulville. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we, were on the, we were on the elevator, all of us, somehow, somewhere. All right. So here's the fun part. It's a perfect link. You were talking about, you know, karmic loops and um, ancestral, you know, things in the past. And so I thought, for those listening, I talked to Lisa before and I said, would you be willing to do a little bit of channeling um, and a, just a, a, um, a meditation or some, some words of healing for those tuning in? I figure all of us, why not around abundance, um, around, um, around healing ancestral patterns. And so I thought that would, we decided together that would be something collectively that we could all benefit from. And Lisa so graciously said she would. So do you want to give like a quick second what it looks like like to channel and how that feels and then you can do it. 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, for me, really, it's about moving into and connecting into this divine source realm where the Akashic records are. And so then I ask the record keepers, the beings of light, to bring the energy and vibration around me or I will ask and I will just do a brief Akashic record opening for the group. So anyone who's listening who wants to be brought into the Akashic records and receive healing, just think, yes, please, you know, that's all you have to do. And then just we'll sit back and close our eyes and I'll just do this little kind of visualization when we open, as we open the records and you may really feel that energy because um, it's real and it's there and people feel it sometimes as a swirling or a cool or a warm, we're all different. Some people are more visual. They might see the silvery blue column of, of light and energy around them. Or, you know, you might feel nothing, but you might notice just that you're lighter at the end. So it's just all perfect, whatever it is for you. So to me, I just hear them see, feel, and I, I, just kind of let whatever the the um, information is just kind of flow through me. So I am a totally conscious channel. That means that the beings are not coming into my body or taking over my body in any way, which there are people who are full body channels. And that means that really that soul comes in and takes over their body and their soul kind of steps back. And um, I know that some people who are full body channels do not even remember anything. They're really unconscious some are semi-conscious even though that that soul is really you know speaking through them and and often in a almost different voice different dialect um, my voice will change a little I notice um, it's a little bit more of a I don't know what softening something people say they hear it um, but I also live in this realm most of the time you know in the Akashic realm most of the time. So to wow. me, it's more of just, you know, putting on my, um, my big listening hat and just really letting that information flow through me. And in that way, we can also do a group healing. Nice. So they just channel the energy through, um, through this beautiful column of light. Beautiful. Well, I'm raising my hand. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so let's just... Sit back with our feet on the ground. I like to do a little grounding so our bodies feel grounded and safe as we do this expansive work. So let's just take a nice breath and just imagine your whole soul is just dropping down and getting really present in your physical body all the way down into your feet. And you can feel your body. It might feel even more tingly as we ask our, our soul, our spirit, to really um, become more present and integrated into the physical form. Often it's not as integrated. And so as we breathe into our hearts, we let our heart chakra open and expand a little further for me, it looks like a spinning golden ball of light. And just let that golden ball fill your whole chest. And it's just as bright and golden and light. And there's a lot of just love that flows from our heart when we allow our hearts to open. And we reach our mind up as we go up, up, up into the Akashic realm, and we ask the divine lords of unconditional love to help us center fully in this moment as we create this sacred space. Please wrap us in your love and protection and allow us to travel to the highest realms of the Akasha available to us today. Please help as we lay our multidimensional hearts open to divine love and release all resistance. Lords of the Akashic Record, please guide us to the deepest truth we can access now. Support us in healing and releasing that which no longer serves on our true path. 
we give great thanks for your divine love and support on this journey today. And we invite the Akashic Record Keepers for all the people who say yes to bring the beautiful Akashic energy column of light around us all, creating this sacred space. And we ask the beings of light to assist us in clearing energy that block us from being truly abundant embodied souls. So if you've just thought, yes, I'm going to ask the record keepers to help us to clear and release past life vows of poverty. So many of you have been light workers throughout many, 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 many lifetimes. And that means that you were monks or you were priests or you were nuns. You may have been an ascetic living in a cave in India. You may have spent your life meditating. And many of those lives and times and places, we vowed to not take money for the gifts that we're sharing. Because we said, these are God-given gifts and I share them freely. And I vow to not take money for this. And that was beautiful and fine in its time. But now we don't live in a monastery. Now we don't live in caves. Now the village is not bringing us food or clothing or sheltering us so that we can spend our days meditating and healing them. And now it's important that we live abundant lives. That means having the monetary resources to have food, clothing, and shelter, to be able to move out of survival mode that we may live in the divine energies and be the healing conduits. And so we clear and release any vows of poverty that we've taken throughout the time-space continuum in any lifetime. And we clear and release any soul contracts that are written into that that are part of the vow of poverty or vow of obedience or even vows of chastity. We don't need any of those vows any longer. And we clear and release any group contracts in which we were with a group. It might have been in a monastery, in a nunnery in which we said, I will stay with you in this energy and I will live in this realm. I will never step out to shine my light brighter than yours. I will not take anything, money for my gifts. And we will stay here together throughout time. That's part of the vow. So it's important because I find that these vows of poverty, these soul group contracts, often hold us back because they make us feel unworthy to step out there and to teach or to speak our truth or to be the healers that we truly came to be. I've had so many clients say, oh, but who am I to write that book or to teach that workshop? You are the only one who can write that book or teach that workshop. That is part of your soul purpose. And so we release these vows. We release these old contracts because they're from hundreds or thousands of years ago. And we let them all go. And we ask the record keepers to help us to reclaim into this body, into this time, those gifts and talents, the times that we were healers or channels, the times that we were teachers or leaders, the times where we were truly able to share our divine gifts and talents with the world. 
we ask the record keepers to help us to reclaim those gifts in this body right here and now. So let yourself feel that energy come in and fill you up, just as you may have felt that old energy leaving or dissipating. And I see all these beautiful gifts coming in. Often to me, they kind of drop down into our crown chakra. It might look like a book or a story. You might see an image from a lifetime. You might see yourself as a high priest or priestess. You might see yourself in the ancient goddess temples, ancient Persia as a teacher. Some of you have walked in the times of the Christ and shared the gifts. You've had many beautiful, profound lives. And it's time, it's time to accept that, to reclaim and allow those gifts to come home into your body now. And just think, I allow, I am open to receive the gifts and talents that I have come to share with the world now. Mm, and so it is. And so it is. So beautiful, kind of a nice short healing. We ask the masters, the teachers, and the beings of light to close and lock the records for now as we invite people to come back fully conscious and present in their physical bodies because that energy can be kind of spacey for us, especially in the beginning. So put your feet on the ground. I like to tap my feet, maybe wiggle your body around a little bit. Let yourself get, oh, yep, back here in the body. <laughs> it's fun to float through time and ethers, isn't it? Kind of, yes. you know. So hopefully, people got to see, remember some lives where, where beautiful healing lives. That was so amazing. I I had a moment of like, oh wait a minute, I'm <laughs> I'm so with you, and I forgot. Oh my gosh, we're recording, and I'm interviewing you. Like, who, what am I doing here? <laughs> I was um, wow, that was really beautiful. So powerful. My gosh. So cool. How do you feel? Does it feel like the way it feels to me is um, observing you sort of just this beautiful lightness, this light ethereal energy. Um, do you feel uplifted when you do that? Does that affect how you feel? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I move much deeper into that realm. So, so for me, it feels very light and very expansive. And that's why I know my voice kind of changes in that, yeah. in that expansive lightness. And um, I'm more visual. So often I'll, I'll see images. I'll just kind of see what's going on as that healing's going on. I feel it more with my hands than in my body. Yes. So if people were watching me, they would often see my hands kind of moving through the air as the things are, um, I feel the energy clearing and moving through time. And so it's, it's kind of wow. funny to watch me. I think in that kind of way, right? Like, and when I when I teach people to do this, I literally show them, you know, here's this timeline, and we're clearing it back here, and and we're bringing it up through time as we reclaim the energy into the body now. So, you know, I find that kind of energetic visual um, can be really useful when we're when we're learning, and I actually feel that is truly happening yeah it's moving outside of time and space it is as real as this is to us mm. usually mm. my uh one question that just came up i know we have to wrap soon and i, I like do not want to i could keep going <laughs> could be on it for hours everybody um but i'm wondering for people listening that are like okay i want to end that karma loop in this lifetime. Maybe it's abundance. Maybe you said earlier betrayal. It could be, um, you know, whatever that is. So is that possible, I guess, with going into your Kashuk records, 
is it possible to end that karmic loop? Um, let's say, even if you have more lives to live, because I we don't know, is that possible to say, you know, I'm committed, I really want to end this loop in this lifetime. I'm, I'm I, my free will, I want to do that. And if so, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> right? How do we do that? I got a couple. I'm sure people got some. There's some things I'm like, okay, I see the pattern. Forgiveness, I know. I mean, you mentioned it yeah. earlier, and I will say um, I'm practicing radical forgiveness uh, myself first and everybody. And in addition to that. Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. So so this is one of the things the record keepers say is that um, the karma has been cleared in the Akashic realms, in the wow. in the source realm. So the the karma itself is actually cleared and now it's for us as humans to realize and embody it. And that is one of the ways that we realize and embody mm. it is to open our, you know, raise our consciousness to say, I do not have to feel, yeah. you know, blame or, or yeah. guilt or judgment. I choose to feel and to think a different way. I choose to, to live in compassion, yeah. to open my heart, to make a different choice. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things that the record keepers say is that, this is why being able to open your records every day is so profound. You can open your records and say, okay, give me another step. You know, what's next? Yeah. What, what else can I clear? Where else is there hidden karma? And this is why I teach people because yeah. the record keeper said, this is just one of the most phenomenal empowerment tools on the planet. Wow. And I teach you to go throughout time and space and to heal the past lives, to unstick some of the karma that's stuck outside of time and space that is yeah. harder for us to clear yeah. just by thinking, oh, wouldn't that be nice to clear it, right? Right. I love it. Okay, Lisa, I can just, I mean, I'm sure people are like, all right, where do I find her? How do I work with her? How do we do this? Um, I mean, I can vouch your book is amazing and very user-friendly. In addition to your book, because we'll have all of this in the show notes, all right, give it to us. How, I know you're about, you know, you, you have a huge... Uh, uh, network you're joining. So talk to us. Give us the goods yes. so we can all work with you in various ways because you're amazing. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so on my website, which is going to be there in the show notes at akashicknowing.com, you will be able to um, find consultations. So if you're interested in having your records read by me, I still do that. I mostly do three or six session packages because if you really want to clear karma, it takes more than an hour. Now I can answer a ton of questions and do a bunch of healing in an hour, but if you're serious and you say, okay, I've had this abundance pattern or I've had these, you know, relationship challenges my whole life or I had this very traumatic childhood and I still am challenged by that pain just so you know I find that you know at least oh an hour every 10 years or an hour or two every 10 years that means if you're 50 you're looking at five to ten hours of you know if you want to change your life right mm -hmm. so I do that um, I am passionate and very fast and driven to really help people heal their lives because that is, you know, who I am and what I came to do. Yeah. And so that's a big piece. And then I teach people how to do um, this work. I teach you how to read your own Akashic records. I have a class that is starting um, June 18th through the Shift Network, which is a very big spiritual teaching platform. So if you're part of the shift network, you will see that showing up. And if you want to, um, to get on my email list, you can do that on my homepage, just sign up for a free meditation and you'll get on my email list and you'll see when the, um, workshop starts in June, there's a free call, um, June 1st, and you will learn in seven weeks how to access your own Akashic records with lots of healing tools, healing prayers, meditations, guided visualizations that are also healing. And um, wow, I think that those are, are the, the yeah. big ways, you know, uh, check out my website and um, you can find my both of my books on Amazon. My gosh, fantastic. 
You are such, you know, so if you're listening, you can also find this will be on my YouTube channel. So you can see Lisa, see her hands moving, <laughs> watch this in action. You're just, you're such a gift. This for me is one of my favorite topics. And, um, and I just, you know, I think healing is the name of the game these days for us to all really see our, our divine selves. I do think of it as, it's funny, I've thought about it as I feel like I've had this contract. I've said that word, there's this contract, I feel it. I can feel this divine contract. And I love the idea that we all can access that. We all have the rights to access that, that we're all here you know, on that mission of love in our own individuated ways. Right. I, you know, it's like I like to say, you actually wrote a plan. Yeah. And it's your birthright to read that plan. Right. Yeah. So many people, I remember when I had all my kids and, you know, people, when they have new babies, they're like, I wish they came with a manual. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> you did. It's yeah. not a baby manual. It's a life plan manual. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so cool. it makes a lot of sense. And I think it is just so, it's just so much easier for people when they get it. Yeah. Right who they are, what they've been and done, those soul contracts, all of those vows. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Well, <laughs> I cannot thank you enough. I know on behalf of this beautiful community of listeners and beyond, we thank you. Um, love the meditation. Just such, such incredible wisdom. And, and I, I'm hoping this did expand some, some minds in some ways. And I'm going to make sure we have all your information because if people have questions, they want to follow up with you. They want to get their own reading. They want to learn how to do it. Like we're going to make sure that you can, everyone can connect with you, Lisa, because you are just you're one of the most generous, gracious, kind souls I've known and met. Really. You're just a, you're a gift. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> it's you. always so fun to find soul family members who would imagine that, you know, <laughs> That we would find each other in Stamford, Connecticut, right? Of all places. I live in San Francisco, right? I don't yeah. know where you are, but right. So DC area. Not not Stanford, Connecticut, but we yeah, I'm so <laughs> so grateful. Thank you for being here. And I just I love you. Thank you. Thank you.